Today, as I comment on one of Neville Goddard's radio lectures, Truth, from a radio talk station KECA in Los Angeles, July 1951, we will be enjoying a soba restaurant in the Japanese countryside. Soba is a buckwheat noodle that can be served cold or warm, and often served with a side of tempura. Neville says, We must learn to know ourselves as infinite love, as good rather than evil. This is not something that we have to become. It is rather for us to recognize something that we are already. The original birthplace of imagination is in love. Love is its lifeblood. Insofar as imagination retains its own life's blood, its visions are images of truth. Then it mirrors the living identity of the thing it beholds. But if imagination should deny the very power that has brought it to birth, then the direst sort of horror will begin. Instead of rendering back living images of the truth, imagination will fly to love's opposite. Fear and its visions will then be perverted in contorted reflections cast upon a screen of frightful fantasy. Instead of being the supremely creative power, it will become the active agent of destruction. Wherever man's attitude to life is truly imaginative, there man and God are merged in creative unity. Remember that love is always creative, causative in every sphere from the highest to the very lowest. There never has existed thought, word, or deed that was not caused by love, or by its opposite, fear of some kind, even if it were only a desire of a not very worthy aim. Love and fear are the mainspring of our mental machinery. Everything is a thought before it becomes a thing. I suggest the pursuit of a high ideal to make a fact of being become a fact of consciousness, and to do this by training the imagination, to realize that the only atmosphere in which we truly live and move and have our being is infinite love. God is love. Love never faileth. Infinite creative spirit is love. The urge that caused infinite unconditioned consciousness to condition itself into millions of sensitive forms is love. What Neville is simply saying here is we are love, and when we start to experience the horrors in the world, it is because we have moved from our true nature into that, the opposite, fear. And looking deeper, mystically, into Neville's message here, he is also telling you that our true nature is consciousness, beyond the body and the mind, not just of the one, but that all make up this consciousness. And the difference between our true nature is that the true nature is unconditioned. But this unconditioned true nature, through the use of awareness and imagination, can become conditioned, as humans and earth. Just like when you go to bed at night and you dream a world as real as what you call reality, it came out of your consciousness. And while you're immersed in the dream, it feels completely real. So do the loving thing. So remember, you are love, and choose to express what feels most noble in your heart. If you're seeing things in life that scare you, then know it is reflecting some fear within you. And the best way to replace that fear, let the fear alone, let it be. But instead, come back to love, always come back to love. What is it like to know that your true nature, your core, is love? The love of loves. That everything you could ever have imagined that you loved on the outside, that when you know your true nature, All will dim in comparison, a light that is eternal, profound, beyond words. And now, let us just be. Let us just tune in to the love that we are, our true nature. And now, let us go into the silence.
Good.